Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So we are working on the 1988 Peterville project with the 3406B cat in it. Yesterday George and I got all the new main bearings put in it, got all them torqued in. Obviously we're doing an in-frame overhaul for those of you who haven't been following this project. So we decided to take the front axle out of it just to make life a little easier for torque and stuff underneath. We don't have to work around everything, which was super easy to take the front axle out. I mean, four spring pins, a couple air lines, and then the steering link. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick the truck back up, and we're going to drop our jack stands down a little bit because it's a little high. And then today we're going to work on getting our liners put back in and possibly maybe get some uh, pistons and rods put back in it. So dad's gonna get the forklift, we're gonna pick it up, we'll drop them down and we'll get started. We need to fix that forklift one of these days. So you're probably wondering why the liners are already in the block. Um, the reason for that is a friend of ours, it's a cat mechanic, we had him come over and we needed to measure the liner protrusion to make sure that it was in spec. So the way that that's done, and he's not a guy that likes to be on camera, so that's why I didn't video any of this. The way it's done is you put head bolts in with a fiber washer under them and you actually torque the spacer down with the liner to the block and then you use a dial indicator to measure this height right here. So he went through and done all that and that's kind of, uh, kind of the real technical part of the build because if that's not right then the cylinder head is not going to seal properly and you'll have compression leaks, you could have water leaks, you have oil leaks. So with these being too spec, everything will clamp down tight with the head bolts. So now what we'll do is we'll take all this back apart, we'll get our O-rings put on our liners, we'll get them lubed up, and we'll get them pushed in the block, and that's what we're going to do today. We're getting these liners put in, so we put in two already. So what we gotta do is we gotta get these kits, open these up. Now we went with an IPD engine kit for anybody that's wondering. Really nice engine kit, everything sealed up real nice. Like all the bearings, they were all vacuum packed, real nice packaging. 
So the three green O-rings go in these grooves on the liners, and then the black O-ring goes around the top. Well, it's not actually, it's just a ceiling ring, and it's not actually an O-ring. But the black one actually gets engine oil on it, and the engine oil makes it swell, and that's what seals it up in its groove. So these bottom, these bottom green O-rings, they get done just so far. I have gotten a little too much. So what we'll do is we'll get this started in the block and then O-rings will hold it up a little bit and then we will get this ring with engine oil put on there and then uh, we'll go ahead and with a tool we'll push them down in the block. We'll show you how to do that. All right, we'll put this in. We've got to make sure that our dot is forward. Ready, George? Right there. George is going to put the tool on. Now, if you want to put the black ring on, you already got it in your hands. Dad's going to put the, the top ceiling ring on. Wouldn't you know if the one that we could do it on video? Mm -hmm. There's okay. And there we go. It's installed. As simple as that. Now that oil will make that top ring swell up and it'll seal up in the top. We've got our three O-rings in the bottom, they're going to seal, and our coolant's going to be sealed. Now, it's very crucial. Do not drop these liners in the block, because they could potentially break off this top ring and fall on through. So, if they don't have any O-rings on them, be very careful. Don't drop them. Or it could even cause them to crack, and you wouldn't even know it. So, that's something to pay attention to. So, the reason that I mentioned the dot forward when we were putting these liners back in is that's because that's how we had it all put in to begin with and measured out. Because it is possible that if you turn these, maybe some, you might end up with a different measurement. But as long as you put it all together, measure it all up, everything is fine, just take it all back apart, put it back together, and you've got it right. We're going to go ahead and get some more O-rings put on. And I should mention that I'm trying to break these videos up into more of a series than all one video. So we actually get more done in a day's time than what the video seems like. I know I said in the last video, I said that that's what we got done for the day. We actually got more than that done for that day. I should have said for this video. But I figured that away I could title them differently so in case somebody's looking for different steps of their project that they might need help on, they don't have to, they don't have to search through a bunch of videos and watch a bunch of video before they get to the part that they want. There you go, Dad, you can take that one.
there we go. Those are ready to go back in the block. George has to put the soap down in the hole. Get that hole looped up real good. Now this is a block that we fixed with the Belzona. We made a video of that. Yeah, it'll get that ring put on. There we go. One more. Got one more to go. Just to add water when we're done. Your hands. And there we have it. All our liners are put back in. So now that our liners are all back in, we're going to move to the next step of putting the pistons, rods, rod caps on, torque and all that. So we're going to start a whole nother video of that. So thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. And we will see you all in the next one.